Welcome to this virtual workshop on enhancing learning in geography with iPad. Hi, I'm Owen. I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator and a music and geography teacher from Loretto Abbey Secondary School in Dublin, Ireland. Whilst this workshop is titled Enhancing Learning in Geography, all of the ideas are applicable in all subject areas and across a variety of age groups. So let's begin by considering the SAMR model. Personally, I feel this is at its best when used as a reflective tool for teachers in order to better their practice. Essentially, this suggests how we can use technology to better learning, but it doesn't always have to be seen as a ladder, and as long as we're enhancing, we're gonna be moving towards transformative learning experiences. In this workshop, there'll be examples of how to do this. We'll also consider the new Apple Teacher Portfolio and the three levels of lesson planning that are shown within this. The first level is Activate, where you can introduce ideas, activate prior knowledge, or get students excited about learning in simple and creative ways. The second level helps students explore new information and connect ideas and deepen their understanding. I'd often approach these by developing the Activate ideas. And the third level is Apply, where students can demonstrate mastery of new material and apply what they've learned in different contexts. And that's how we'll approach it in this workshop, beginning with Activate, moving to Explore, and then to Apply. A good guiding compass when integrating technology in the classroom is to think, are you adding value? Are students learning new skills? Are they demonstrating in new ways? Or are they able to go deeper with their learning? The theme for this today will be volcanoes, because who doesn't like volcanoes? The suggested apps for use in this workshop are camera, photos, notes, sketch a school, but the main app we will use is Keynote. As you take the role of student during much of this workshop, the first task I'll ask you to do is to sketch a cartoon or emoji style version of the three stages in the life cycle of a volcano. This activity could be used when introducing a topic or when recapping a previous lesson. For those who don't know, the three stages are active, when a volcano is erupting regularly, dormant, when it's asleep, and extinct, when it's dead and will no longer erupt. To sketch, you could use Notes, Sketch a School, or Keynote. If you have an Apple Pencil or Logitech Crayon, simply tap the screen to start sketching. But if you don't have an Apple Pencil, in Keynote, tap Plus, then tap Drawing. This will then open the drawing tools. At this stage, you could tap Pause on this video and take some time to complete your sketch. Once you've completed your sketch, it's a good time to reflect on what we're doing. Are we merely replacing an activity that's perfectly good on paper? And can we think of ways that we can improve this using iPad? Take some time now to think about this. So let's consider some ways that we can add value to this activity, that we can go beyond what pen and paper can allow and move towards augmentation and modification in the SAMR model. So let's look at how we can create more engaging Activate lessons, or how we can develop these to become explore or apply level lessons. One simple way to develop this activity is to ask students to choose an emoji to match each of the three types of volcano, active, dormant, and extinct. This can be a great way to recap a topic or to generate classroom discussion. Take some time to try this now yourself or consider how you would apply this idea in another subject area. Here are a few examples that typically pop up. What did you choose? Next, let's use some image personification to go further with this idea. Students can use their iPad's camera to take photographs of everyday items, such as rocks, flower pots, Lego, or anything they can find around their home, school, or garden. They can then use the sketching tools in Keynote or Photo Markup to personify their chosen object and create their three volcanoes. Or they can think much bigger and take a photograph of a local mountain or hill. Let's look at a demo of this in action. First, open the photograph and then the top right, tap Edit. Then tap the Menu or More button with the three dots and then tap Markup. This will open up the pen tools. You can move these to the left or the right and there's a choice of pens, highlighters, crayons, an eraser and more. You can set the weight or width of the pen. 
and also change the opacity or transparency. Then use the various pen tools to create your active volcano. Add in lava erupting using reds, yellows and oranges. Then add eyes and a scary, violent face to emphasize the active volcano. Add an ash cloud and lower the opacity of the gray that you use to make it seem more realistic. Use the crayon tool to show lava flowing down the sides of the volcano. And don't forget to add a crater at the top. You can also add the name of each stage or more information if you like. Then tap done and done again to save your image. So here are my three examples, active, dormant and extinct. Take some time now to try this out or to think of ways that you could apply this in other subject areas. Now let's consider how we can use this activity as part of a writing prompt. Here's an example of this in a workbook I created for pages for iPad. The marked up photo has already been added and there are prompts to encourage the student to think about what it would be like if a volcano erupted in their area. Using Keynote, Pages or Numbers, it's very easy to record audio directly into a document on iPad. Here's a demo of that. In the top right of the screen, tap plus. Then make sure the picture icon is selected and third down, select record audio. Tap the record button at the bottom and then record what you want to say. When you're finished, tap stop. You can preview your recording or tap edit to trim it, tap undo, or when you're ready, tap insert and then drag the audio recording to where you want it to go. Here's an example of this activity recorded by my son. There are no volcanoes near my house, but what if there was? People who live close to the volcano will be in danger. But if you live further away, you might have a chance to escape. If there was an eruption, the whole land will be covered in ash and lava. If the eruption was near our house, I'd feel worried and scared. We would get everyone in our family to get in the car and drive away. We could help others that don't have cars to escape. And when we come back home, we could help others cleaning up all the ash. Take some time to try this now yourself in Keynote or Pages. Or consider how you would use this in another subject area. Let's see how we can go further using screen recording on iPad. As the name suggests, screen recording allows you to record everything on your screen, but also allows you to record your voice when you turn the mic on. Screen recording can be enabled in settings and then go to control center. To begin a screen recording, swipe down from the top right to open up control center. Then tap and hold the screen record icon and tap to turn the microphone on. Then tap start recording and after a countdown from three, you can start your screen recording. To end the recording, tap the screen recording icon in the top right of your screen. Here's an example of screen recording used to add audio narration. Active volcanoes erupt regularly. They're generally found at plate boundaries or at hotspots. Dormant volcanoes are asleep. They haven't erupted in a long time, but may do so again. Extinct volcanoes are dead. They haven't erupted in recorded history. Now take some time to try this out yourself. You could make a screen recording of anything, based on a video, a photograph, a website, or a sketch. So far, we've looked at several ways to complete this activity and to learn about volcanoes, but there's so many more. And this is one of the strengths of iPad, to allow our learners opportunities to learn in ways that suit them. Students can create videos, podcasts, charts and graphs, write poetry, record songs, or make animations. And it is often in the combination of these that we're able to engage in deeper learning, to explore more, 
and for students to apply what they know in different contexts. So let's go further and show this in action with one more activity at the apply level. Using the animation features in Keynote, we can go further than what we've previously done and truly create a transformative learning experience for students. So let's look at a demo of how to do this. First, open Keynote and tap the plus in the bottom left to add a new blank slide. Tap the plus icon in the top right. Make sure you're on the shape icon and then search for a volcano. Tap to add the default volcano shape. You could resize and reposition this on the slide. Leave a lot of space at the top. While the shape is selected, tap the format icon and under style, tap on fill and select a suitable color such as gray. Next, we want to make our active volcano appear to erupt. Tap plus and then select a suitable shape. Resize and reposition this shape above the crater of the volcano. Then tap on the shape and tap animate. Tap add build in and look for the flame animation. You may have to scroll to find it. Tap to select this animation, then tap X on the left. Tap done. Tap format and lower the opacity to 0% to make the shape transparent. Tap play and then tap your screen. The volcano will erupt, but it's at a very short duration at the moment. So tap on the shape and tap animate. Tap on the flame and then change the duration to about 10 to 12 seconds. Tap play and tap your screen again. This would allow time for a student to add their audio narration. Here's an example using a build out animation for the dormant volcano. And for the extinct example, I've used a magic move transition to move from one slide to another, change the colors and resize the volcano. Press pause now and try this out and make your volcano erupt. And think about how you could use animation with Keynote in other areas of the curriculum to support your learners. Here's an example of a finished project created by my son, combining music created in GarageBand, animation in Keynote, and screen recording. Types of volcanoes. There are three stages in the life of a volcano. The volcano is active at the beginning of its life. When it is active, it erupts regularly. During an eruption, lava, smoke, fire, and ash cloud erupt from the crater. Then the volcano might become dormant. This is when the volcano is inactive, like it's asleep. But it might become active and erupt again. After the volcano, has been dormant for a long time, the volcano becomes extinct. This means it's dead and will never erupt again. Hopefully this example shows how we can move beyond substitution or even augmentation to really modify or redefine a task and allow students to be creators of content and engage in tasks that were previously inconceivable. We've also looked at some examples that fit to the Apple Teacher portfolio model of activate, explore, and apply. But we've also seen how simple activities which would fall under activate can be developed to create explore and apply lessons. To learn more about Apple Teacher and begin your Apple Teacher journey, go to the Apple Teacher Learning Center at appleteacher.apple.com and log in with your Apple ID and password. The Apple Teacher Learning Center is full of ideas and inspiration and you can go further with Keynote and learn more about animation. To bring even more creativity into your lessons with iPad, check out the Everyone Can Create series, based around four pillars of music, drawing, photo, and video. Although a good place to start are the teacher guides. The Everyone Can Create guides are available for download for free on the Apple Bookstore. If you've been inspired by the activities in this workshop about volcanoes, there's a workbook available too. 
You can download the workbook using the following link or by scanning the QR code on screen. You can also see more of my work on Twitter or on YouTube. My Twitter handle is at underscore ehughes underscore and you can find me on YouTube using the short link shown on screen now. This has been a workshop about enhancing learning in geography with iPad. Thank you for your time and hopefully it gives you some ideas and inspiration to bring back to your classroom.